Next up on the GOP's agenda, stripping women of political and economic power. And, you know, just, just follow me, you know, follow my logic here on this. I think you'll find it interesting. You know, you know as, as we all saw yesterday, in about six months, probably this decision will come down in June of next year. In about six months, Republicans in 30 Republican-controlled states will probably lose their right to access to an abortion. And it's important to understand that the Supreme Court doesn't give rights or grant rights. What it does is it recognizes rights and then defines the extent to which they can be infringed upon by our government. Right? Yes, you have the right to, to own a gun, but you don't have a right to own a sawed-off shotgun or a machine gun. Um, yes, you have the right to walk around in public, but you can't walk against uh, a, a red light. Uh, you know, or you can drive in public, but you can't drive through a red light. In other words, we what the courts do is interpret the laws in ways that, that in many ways restrain our rights. But generally the courts do not take away our rights. To the best of my knowledge, this has only happened at least with, a, with a, any substance once in the history of the Supreme Court and that was in 1896 in Plessy versus Ferguson where the Supreme Court took away the rights that had been granted to African Americans with the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to the Constitution and through the process of Reconstruction took away those rights to vote, to public assembly, to, to due process, uh, you know, basically stripped African Americans of all of the due process rights for the next 50 years. And then the Supreme Court restored those rights in 1954 with Brown versus Board. But that's about it. But here we have a case where the court is planning on taking away constitutional rights, specifically from women. The court ruled in 73 that women have a, a right to an abortion in part because of the liberty right defined in the 14th Amendment that, you know, no state shall, and specifically says no state shall, uh, you know, take away any person's uh, rights, right to liberty, unless through due process, unless it's done by an act of law. And this is what they're trying to do. They're, they're trying to create an act of law here. And, uh, and the Fourth Amendment privacy right, which, you know, the Fourth Amendment basically says you're, you have security in your personal effects. And uh, that, that was the woman's privacy right to keep a, an abortion between herself and her physician. And, you know, here we are. So what's next? Well, next up on the GOP agenda is stripping women of political and economic power by banning most forms of birth control. You'll recall, those of you old enough to remember, know, remember what I'm talking about. And, and the birth control pill was uh, uh, approved by the FDA in 1959. It was legal, but for the next two years, it was only used for things like irregular menstrual periods. In 1961, it was approved for contraception. But it really wasn't until 63, 64 that it started being used in a big way uh, as a birth control pill. There was, you know, people had doubts about, you know, is it safe? Is it going to cause cancer? All that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, but now we've got it. Now we've got birth control pills. And birth control pills and IUDs are up next on these guys' uh, agenda. And for example, in Texas, Senate Bill 8, which puts that $10,000 bounty on the heads of people who help a woman get an abortion. That's the one that gets all the attention. But Senate Bill 4 also passed. And Senate Bill 4 is uh, particularly insidious. It makes it a crime for a woman to be prescribed the, uh, any of these abortion-inducing drugs more than three weeks after missing a period. Milf, Mifeprex, which works up to 70 days after the last menstrual period, Cytotec, which works up to 13 weeks of pregnancy, and methotrexate, which works up to nine weeks of pregnancy. Um, a physician can go to prison if they prescribe these after the third week after a missed period. Uh, Lauren Windsor, the reporter, asked Texas Governor Greg Abbott straight up if he wanted to try to ban all, control in the, all birth control pills in the state of Texas. And he said it was still possible which is step two on the Republican Party's war on women. Rick Santorum famously ran for president in 2012 on a platform, you know, he was just right up front about it, Rick Santorum, that he wanted to ban birth control pills to get hormonal birth control was actually a form of abortion. These, this is what's called personhood. These, these personhood bills define 
life as beginning at the moment of fertilization. When the sperm crawls up the fallopian tube and intersects an egg and fertilizes that egg, that, according to these personhood bills that have been introduced in, and at the federal level, none have passed so far. But there's a whole bunch of them waiting for Roe v. Wade to get knocked down. They define personhood. They define that, that fertilized egg as a person. Now, this is three days before it implants in the uterine wall and, you know, attach, and, be, and forms a placenta and begins uh, the process of gestation. So, you know, bottom line here, at least one legislative branch of the following states have already passed one of these personhood laws, which would outlaw IUDs, which prevent implantation, and would outlaw all hormonal birth control pills, which prevent implantation. And the states that have already passed these through at least one branch of their legislatures are Montana, Kansas, Virginia, Tennessee, North Dakota, Arkansas, Mississippi, and they have been introduced, but not yet passed, in Ohio, Georgia, Maine, Texas, South Carolina, Oklahoma, Iowa, and in the United States Congress. There's a group called the Personhood Alliance. They have affiliates all across the United States. Catholic leaders have signed on with this. Multiple hard right evangelical groups have signed on. Uh, denominations have signed on to this as well. I mean, there's a long history here of men controlling women and, and passing laws to do the same. I mean, you know, at the time of the, of the foundation of this country, when, when we became a country in, in 1789, a married woman was not allowed to make out a will. She was not allowed to own land. She could not legally own anything worth, you know, worthy of willing to another person. Any property she brought into a marriage became her husband's at the moment of marriage and would only revert to her if he died and she did not remarry. But even then, she'd have to give one-third of it. She'd only get one-third of her husband's property. And what third that was and how she could use it would be determined by a court-appointed man, a male executor, who would supervise her for the rest of her life or until she remarried. When she dies, or when a widow dies, the executor could either take property for himself or else decide to whom it would pass. She couldn't leave a will. She has no say in the matter. Women could not sue in a court of law except using the weak procedures allowed to the mentally ill and to children. And it, it goes on. There's a whole list of these things over in my op-ed today. And of course, this is all based on this religious notion that Eve ate the apple and therefore God is pissed off at women. St. Paul wrote about it. St. Jerome wrote about it. St. Thomas Aquinas wrote about it. I quote all of them in the, in the op-ed. So here we are now with the GOP's Commission for the Promotion of Virtue and the Prevention of Vice. It's on its way. And it's not like we weren't warned. During Mike Pence's first year as governor of Indiana, his state put a young woman in prison for having a miscarriage, alleging that she'd taken an abortion-causing drug. Pervy Patel did not have a trace of such drug in her system, but Pence sentenced her to 20 years in prison anyway. Just a few years earlier, Indiana had also held B.B. Schwa for 435 days in the brutal maximum security Marriott, Marion County prison, facing 45 years to life for trying to kill herself and in the process causing the death of her 33-week fetus. Utah charged 28-year-old Melissa Ann Rowland with murder because she refused a C-section, preferring vaginal birth for her twins, and one of them died in the birth process. 16-year-old Rennie Gibbs was charged by the state of Mississippi with depraved heart murder when her baby was born dead because his umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck. She had traces of cocaine in her system, and so off she goes to prison. Angela Carter was ordered to have a C-section to deliver her baby before she died of cancer. She and the baby both died from the procedure. These cases have exploded. Cases like this. Duke University's Journal of Health, Politics, Policy, and Law found 413 cases like this between the time Roe v. Wade became law in 2005, and then the Guttmacher Institute found another 380 cases between 2005 and 2014. Georgia just passed a law signed by Governor Brian Kemp which puts any woman in that state who has a miscarriage at the risk of 30 years in prison or even the death penalty. And other states are in line to do the same. Now, we saw this in Romania, which passed a similar, you know, a total abortion ban back in 1966. And 10,000 women died of botched illegal abortions. That's the official number. The actual number is probably 10 times that. Maternal death was higher than in any other country in Europe by a factor of 10. Poverty among women exploded. When that country was open to the world in 1989, 
not even 30 years later, over 170,000 children were, were found in these brutal orphanages, ignored, emaciated, and handcuffed to cribs. When Governor Mike Pence proudly signed Indiana's abortion restrictions in 2016, that law required that an abortion be buried in a cemetery or cremated and have a ceremony. So women all across Indiana started this periods for Pence thing, letting Mike Pence know when their period began and when it ended so they wouldn't be busted and have to, and have to create a, a, a funeral for their menstrual periods. I mean, this is, this is like Saudi Arabia, and this is just the beginning. I, I've got more, and I will share it with you after the break in about five minutes. This, and, and in fact, where we're going with this goes way beyond women, goes way beyond abortion, and even beyond birth control.